All right, guys, it is 12.03 p.m. right now. I woke up probably around 30 minutes ago, so like around 11.30. And the reason I woke up so early was because I knew for a fact that I had a package coming in the mail from a UPS. It's my Mavic drone, like the whole uh, fly more combo, whatever thing I ordered. And it's supposed to come to my old house, which is 15 minutes away. So the reason that I got up this early was I planned to wake up, drive directly to that house, eat breakfast, and kind of chill out there and just start my day there and wait for that package to come. Because when you order something that expensive, I think it's over... Once you order something over $700, it can't just arrive to your house. You actually have to sign for it. So I didn't want to take any chances. I wanted to be there myself for when it comes so I could sign for it, take it, bring it back here, play with it, review it, all that fun stuff. But as soon as I woke up at around 1130, I opened up my phone and I checked the tracking number and it said the first attempt was made out of like 1123, I think it was, which is pretty ridiculous because normally when I order packages from UPS or uh, from B&H Photo, they come in around like 2, 3, 4, even 5 p.m. So this one came so early. I was just ridiculously surprised. So very inconvenient, but I actually called the UPS store and they said that I have a small window between 6.30 and 7 to actually go there, drive there myself to the UPS store and pick up the package. So I have roughly six hours to kill and be very productive. And then as soon as 6.30 comes around, we're going to go. We're going to pick up the Mavic. So I'm going to start my day with a super high calorie shake because one, it's a shake. It's easy to consume. It's liquid. Your body absorbs it faster and just has a lot of calories in it. And it's pretty much going to give me an easy start for 1,000 calories for the day. So I'm going to show you guys how I make the shake. I've shown it to you before, but I'm going to do it super quick, unchronological. We have three packets of oatmeal right here. Two of them are maple and brown sugar, and one is cinnamon spice. It doesn't really matter. The random three that I picked. So next, we're going to put in two scoops of vanilla whey. And of course, we're going to finish off with a, not a tub of ice cream, but a few scoops of vanilla ice cream. I'm pretty much out of milk. These are the only two uh, milks that I've left. This has maybe... 90% of what I want and there's like this things like they're almost solid. It's got the last 10% so hopefully I dump these two and have enough milk for what I want. Uh, actually I think that's enough. I don't even need this little uh, organic hollow thingy. So this blender isn't exactly the most efficient or the most powerful because we got it at Walmart for like 20 bucks because normally good blenders cost a lot more than that but with time and a little bit of patience and effort you can get the job done for this. It's not really an issue but if you mix anything more intense in the specific blender it's not really going to work out that well. <laughs> Right before I drink the shake, I always take these two lactase pills because I'm lactose intolerant and they definitely help me out a lot. So pop these two pills and I'm going to drink the shake. I'm in a tricky situation right now because I like have a lot of motivation to go train right now. Like I really want to go work out, but it's 1.50 and I don't really know if I'm going to be able to comfortably do everything and pretty much come back and be ready for getting the drone pretty much at 6. But at the same time, if I wait till 6.30 to get the drone, I come home at 7, I'm obviously going to be fiddling around playing it for a while, it's going to be 8, 8, 30, then it might be a little bit too late to get to the gym show, I'm like, I'm going to look at the dilemma and I don't know exactly what I want to do, I'm going to think about it for a little bit. The decision has been made, I'm officially going to go to the gym now, I think this is the, easily the earliest I've ever went to the gym in probably a few months now, weeks, I don't know, a long time, so I'm going to go to 7-Eleven grab my coffee because I'm not really using any like extreme pre-workouts recently so just a cup of coffee and go straight to the gym I definitely want to do some squats today because I haven't done those in a while and my legs are shrinking up and I don't like that so I'm going to get more blood flow in the quads maybe push the weight a little bit see if I can get more than last time to pretty much assess how my injury is healing and yeah pretty much I might, I might do some like upper body stuff maybe a few symptoms on bench something like that so let's get that coffee let's go to the gym it's 2 one now which means it's four hours before six and six is when I like to be fully ready to head over to the UPS store and I think four hours is plenty of time to get everything done so I got four extra batteries that I'm bringing with me here's a genuine Sony battery for the camera here's some like weird Chinese weird copy genuine one or another weird Chinese copy because I'm just letting you know if you guys want to get this camera the Sony RX100 or any of Sony RX100 like three four or five especially four or five you need extra batteries because you, you'll be surprised that you need like at least two of them just for a gym at or like a gym footage it's unbelievable so make sure you get yourself a ton of extra batteries All right, guys, so this is the day after. The, when did I do this workout? Like two days ago? 
You did it two days ago, yeah. Yeah, it was like two days ago. I right? so actually like, knew for sure that you did it two days ago. You yeah, okay, it was uh, just double checking. It was two days ago. I was just making sure. How did you so, know it was two days? Hold on, I got, I got to do the voiceover. Like I'm already batching. Here's my first set of eight. But let me explain really quick. So, my recollection on this day isn't like the sharpest. I'm just gonna tell you what I guys, what I remember. Just look at how so many I came, got, I came in. It. Okay, I did. I hit 225. I want sure. like I was pushing and I felt like I could get 10, but I stopped at eight. And the reason that I stopped today is because, you know, I'm going to do a volume. I'm going to get like three sets because literally a t few days before this, I could hardly get it for five due to being malnourished. So <clears throat> the fact that I knew, the fact that I knew for a fact that I can get 10 felt pretty good. So I just did a few sets of eight and this is my last set of eight. I just did three sets and everything's going well and, but the sets getting more difficult. But for some reason I have this like absurd cockiness where on my last rep that I could have gotten, which I'm about to tell my last rep right now, I pause it for some reason. Oh, I could pause it. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know why I thought that. And that resulted in me having to do an ass raise to get the weight up. So next thing, squatting the actual goal for today's workout to like pretty much give myself an update on my injury, see what's going on with that. So I'll put on 135 and, and honestly, it was like feeling really good. Um, I actually cut this clip off because it was just me doing 135 for a bunch of reps. So you know what? I'm going to put on 185. So the next clip's going to be 185. And you guys have not seen me with 185 plus on the squat rack in months. So it's a huge PR of recovery. I'm coming back. And 185 actually didn't feel bad whatsoever in terms of my hip adductor tendon. Because like recently when I would squat, I would with 135 would be completely fine. But as soon as weight would get up, I'd realize like, hey, here's the issue. So I'm like, where am I going to feel this issue? So I put on 225 and I'm squatting and I just don't have that feeling in my tendon that I like is always there. So you know what? I put 275 on. I hit it. The feeling's still not there. And I put on 315 right now. And I'm about to hit it. But I did not think I would just be able to hit it so easily, like completely pain free, not an ounce of pain. Like this rep was a struggle. It was difficult, but it was just great great in the sense that I didn't have like the hip pain there. So not hip pain, the hip adductor pain. So here's me just doing like a quick set of eight just to get a little bit more blood flow in the legs. I obviously didn't want to go heavier than 315 because that would have been ridiculous. I may, be, I may have possibly injured myself. So proceed to deadlifts. And like I said before, deadlifts don't bother that hip adductor tendon whatsoever. So I can kind of be more intense with them, but I still haven't deadlifted in a decent amount of time like in the past compared to where I'm deadlifting now. So. Here's 225, it's feeling good. And I didn't even know exactly what I was gonna do, so I just did my typical warm up, put on three plates. Here's me hitting three plates, put on 365, and it felt good. And as you notice on that, my hips shot up a little bit, and that's not supposed to happen. It looked right there on four or five, hips shot up too. And pretty much the only two ways that you could really fix that is have more tightness in your posterior chain. Here's me hitting 455. And yeah, get, be more tight in your posterior chain and also just starting off with your hips higher. So. That was a big PR, and I've actually never pulled 500 conventional here. I attempted. I don't know why I thought I would have been able to get it. You've it gotten just, it conventional? Have I? I don't yeah, remember. Maybe I have. Back so. in the day. So, yeah, I just wanted to see. It was a delusional thing. I could have got it then, and I couldn't. So I backed off and just did 315. I wanted to do a touch-and-go set of 10, but due to my hood being on, it didn't have anything in my peripheral vision, so I couldn't. The weights were sloppy. It was bouncing weird. I couldn't do touch-and-go. And then here I decided to do some chest, and I don't know why I picked this angle. This is like one of the dumbest angles I've ever chosen, but at some point while I was hitting this chest stuff, I managed to strain my pec, which is impressive because it's such lightweight and I didn't feel anything happen, but yeah, finished off on 35. All right, guys, I had a pretty, um, I had a pretty interesting workout, like, just not what I expected whatsoever. Like, some days I just come in and I just have these uh, nostalgic powerlifter feelings, I guess you could say, and I, whatever, you, you, already, hear the, you already heard the voiceover by now because you just saw it, but yeah, I'm probably gonna record the voiceover to that workout sometime tonight or tomorrow when I edit this video, so yeah, that's gonna be that. I originally intended to pretty much do like a quick little edit on this, like slap a song, but screw it, I just wanna do a voiceover because like I said, this workout was a little bit unique. So let's look how we're doing at time. It is 5.11 p.m. right now. That leaves me plenty of time to go home, make a quick shake, a little post-workout meal, and then I could just eat that peacefully, drink that peacefully, whatever, depends on what I make, and then we head off to UPS on the dot exactly on time and we pick up the Mavic. All right, guys, I just pulled up to my house and two interesting things were discovered on the way home. One, I think I kind of have a, a strain built up in my right pec. It's like right here. I feel like an adhesion form is like a tender spot. I don't know how that happened. Like there's nothing sudden happening during my workout, but it's not really anything significant at all, kind of minor. Just take it a little easy on the chest for like maybe one or two weeks and kind of form all that area out, massage out with my hand. 
not really a big deal, but whatever. Thought it was interesting. Second thing, um, Noel Mack, he like FaceTime me. We were on FaceTime for a little bit, and, and he was telling me that John Olson, he's a really cool uh, YouTube vlogger. You guys check him out. He uh, he got this new camera for his vlogging channel, and it's a brand new red camera with an 8K helium sensor. And that's not just the best entire camera anyone on YouTube has, period. No movies have been shot on that camera yet. All movies have been shot on like an older red camera with like a different sensor. This is such new ridiculous technology that it's it's just unbelievable that a fitness YouTuber, not, not a fitness YouTuber, that a YouTube vlogger already has one of those cameras and he's making vlogs with it. That's just... It's blowing my mind. Like, if, if John also got an Aerial Lex next week, I just wouldn't be surprised. So, I don't know. Just a little fun fact, nerd fact, whatever. But anyway, also, another thing. I was on the phone with UPS, and I made sure that I can make, uh, made sure that I could pick my package up. It is 5.30. Got 30 minutes to pretty much go home, eat real quick, and then, like I said, we're going to go to that UPS store. No. Oh. What is up, brother? When did you wake up today? Just recently. Just recently. Get out. How recent? Um, within the past hour. Damn. I just ran into a little problem. Like, my plans were to come home and make that smoothie shake that I made in my previous videos with uh, frozen fruit, orange juice, and two scoops away. But I just realized we don't actually have the fruit. Like, we're out of it. And I got to go to ShopRite sometime soon. So, that's a huge bummer. I'm... What times? I have about like maybe 10, 15 minutes before I have to leave. So if I could find out, figure out what I'm going to eat. If I can't, well, I guess I'll have to eat afterwards. We'll see. Quinn's currently editing his latest video that's going to be coming out. It's a workout with Kenny Rand. What you guys hit? Like everything? Chat? No, you hit chest, right? Yeah, we did like a push day, but the gym was closing early. So we literally just uh, panicked and did buddy curls at the end. <laughs> got the biggest pump of my life. That's so funny. They were doing a push day and the gym closed. So they're just doing hardcore panic curls. <laughs> panic curls. That's funny. Panic but yeah. Uh, Kenny actually called me when I was in the gym today. He wanted to train or like see if anyone was training. So I said that, listen, tomorrow, let's hit a back workout. So confirm, boom, done. So if everything goes as planned, tomorrow me and Kenny should hit a back workout. I'm going to film for you guys, of course. But it just kind of sucks that I deadlifted today. So I'm not going to be able to deadlift tomorrow or like anywhere near what I was able to deadlift today. Or, and also, and not and or, but, and also, all my back movements are going to be a little weaker just due to my erectors and everything being kind of fatigued. But still, we're going to go in there. We're going to kill back. It'll be fun. We'll see what Kenny's capable of, how powerful that man is. Did you get thy ingredients? I got one. You got one? What do you mean? I didn't get any orange juice. Damn, why not? Forgot. Shit, I have to go buy it at 7 But anyway, we don't have enough time to make it right now. We have to leave right now to go pick it up. And then afterwards, like when we pick it up, we can peacefully make the shake and peacefully drink it. Sound good? Yeah. All right, so... This UPS store should be about 10 minutes away, according to the GPS. Doubt there's going to be any traffic, so I don't even know why I'm thinking about that. I'm being extremely paranoid about this. So everything's on time. I called and made the appointment. Nothing should go wrong. Alright guys, so it's, it's fine, it's time, it's time, it's time to get the mat. It's been months. It's been months. I pre-ordered it, thought I was going to get it mid-October when they said they would ship. Big disaster, come on DJ, you got to produce a lot more of those. You guys are better than you think. More people want your shit, so. Are you ready? I've been ready. Oh my god, let's go. I gotta be sneaky. Yeah. Fuck, bro. Are you sure that's it? You hope that's it? I know it's it. Look, it has the B and H tape. I wore some stuff in B and H. I know exactly what it looks like. Oh yeah, it does. English Creek Avenue. Ready, please. Not through it. I'm throwing in the mail. Yo, Kenny, what's in that box right there? If you had to say, what's in that box? 
I don't know, dude. What's in that box? Come on, Ken. You know what's in that box. Uh, Quinn, you know what's in that box? This is the thing you put in your pocket, sure yo. You can put it in your pocket if you got big pockets. <laughs> Uh, Jen, you know what's in the box. Chris, you know what's in the box? I mean, you can tell me. Oh, oh, oh my god. Say something about it. Quinn, are you ready for this unboxing? Quinn, can you, like, are you ready? I think I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> are you fucking ready? It was just like an old drone that he already had. <laughs> They said the wrong one. I've had a ton of experience Easy with oven. defective Phantom 4 drones with crooked gimbals and no amount of calibration will fix it. So if this Mavic has this issue, for me to send it back to DJI using my warranty, I wouldn't see this drone for like half a year. So if it is messed up, which would be severely depressing, I would have to suck it up because that's my best option. <gasps> Quinn, are you ready for this? <sighs> yeah, legal work. Yeah, bubble. I just want to show you guys. Everyone was just sitting here, literally. They can't move on with their life until they see what's in this box, and I'm the exact same way. Times ten. We're all so excited. This is the carrying case bag. I know for a fact. This is all the extra shit. The fly more combo. Are you? Definitely a Mavic in there, Chris. Is there a Mavic in there? It looks to be. If a Mavic. I had to say, I would say there is a Mavic. It looks in here. to be a Mavic Pro. Just. It's just. I think these broke. Just look at it. Just, just hold it for a little bit. Just hold it. Respect it. How, how do you feel? Euphoric. God, <laughs> Jonah's life has been changed forever. Can you touch it? Hold that, no, yo, I'm not trying to feel you fork right now. <laughs> oh, you're you fork enough, <laughs> Kenny Quinn? Just, oh, just look at that. I gotta brace myself. Look how correct that is. Yeah, okay. That's exactly that what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Nothing more, nothing less. Just look at it. All right, now we're all gonna touch the remote. Everyone, get in line. Dude, this thing's built like an ox. Yeah, it feels sturdy. No, the remote. I think Ron had something to do with that. Play oh, with dude, it. Did Ron put that together? It's like a video game. No. <laughs> Look at that. How honestly is this packaged? How honest is that, Chris? It's pretty honest. Tell how honest it is. Listen, is that honest? Yeah. Oh, no. Jenna, is that honest? No. Yo, Kenny. <laughs> Not quite. Take care of it. All right, we're gonna be right back, and it's gonna be flying in the air. All right, so we have the drone here. I just turned it on. The battery seems to be half full, which is more than enough. And this control, I just want to say, just feels extremely solid. Like when you have your phone on here, it's like it, it feels a lot more well built than like the Phantom 4 controller because it just feels like tighter and just like better, more dense or whatever you want to call it. And it's just it's just so much. How much nicer is it? It's a lot nicer. Tell me how much nicer it is. It's a lot nicer. It's a high so. quality controller. Yeah. All I can say. So I've completely forgot. Oh. Firmware upgrade complete every time you get a new drone. It's annoying you have to do all this firmware stuff. I cannot fly it yet because I need one battery to be at least 50% charged so I could start the firmware upgrade because you can't fly. I need to activate it. All that stuff needs to happen. But first, the battery has to be at least 50%. So I'm waiting for that to charge a little bit. Probably in three minutes, I'll be fully charged. Not fully charged, over 50% charged. Put it in the drone, turn it on, do the activations, do the calibrations. Do the activations, do the calibrations, and do the. I said activations already, and then do the firmware upgrades, it doesn't run. We have this theater here already for the launch in the kitchen. The firmware upgrades aren't really finished because like the remote control needs to be charged to 50. You just watch the stuff, right? I don't really care. I think it has enough good firmware on here to not crash and kill everyone in this kitchen, so we're about to take it off. Alright guys, so I'm just going to end the video off with a, not necessarily a review, but like my first impressions on the drone. So, I'm pretty sure when Jonah, he's a 
sitting over there. When he finished the recording, when he clicked cancel to record, that's when I just like launched it up. And the first thing I noticed, like just to say first of all, indoors, it's a rock. It stays completely stable, like to the point where like it's actually not even twitching at all. To the point where the gimbal doesn't really have to do any work whatsoever. It's actually a rock. So yeah, I just wanted to say that the Phantom 4 was amazing indoors. You could easily fly it indoors, but this is just on a whole nother level. And the Phantom 3 Pro, which is over there without the two IMUs and the extra downward sensors, just you, I would not fly it indoors. It's just not safe. It's not stable at all. So then I took it outdoors. But before I say that, here's one thing I want to say. I was so eager to fly it that I didn't really do all the firmware upgrades. I just activated. I did a quick upgrade. Then I saw I have to do another upgrade. So I just screwed. I, I didn't want to do it right because I just wanted to fly it right away. And a big problem happened while I was flying. So I flew it up. I got it in sports mode. And one thing I haven't heard anyone say this whatsoever is that all the Phantom Series drones, when they're flying outside and it's nighttime, they have this extremely distinct, like, like bright red light that's blinking and blinking and blinking. And there's another light behind it that's always on so you know where the drone is you know exactly where the front of it is it's super convenient the mavic it just has like a blinking green light and i, I don't know if it's on the front or the back or anywhere but it just blinks green like a very very weak green light so i couldn't really see it that well at nighttime so i surprised no one talking about this but at nighttime i kind of i would feel a little bit uncomfortable flying because i can't see it as well as i would see like a phantom series in the air but anyway in terms of reception, this new OcuSync that DJI is using over the light bridge is significantly better in my opinion because, put it like this, I flew to McDonald's and a, in an island gym. Those are both easily within a mile of this place, of like where I'm at living right now. So this range on, the range on light bridge is I believe 3.1 miles. So in theory, you should be able to go all the way to McDonald's anywhere within a mile range around here. Completely no problem, but that's not the case because Things like people's Wi-Fi, their phones, like the antennas, just pretty much all the wires up in the street, all this interference causes lag in the signal and interference and just pretty completely blunts the range. So it's only 3.1 miles in ideal conditions with a clear line of sight. This new drone, the Mavic, with the OcuSync, is a 4.3 mile range, I believe. And also, they did a... Just gonna say is also what they did was inside besides just making the range longer, they made the signal like stronger. So in areas where I'm like within easily a mile range, there's no longer this lag that I always get. Like it's a much cleaner signal. The screen doesn't have these weird like fuzzy lines through it. So it was a lot better on that. But here's what went wrong. I was flying it, then all of a sudden it says like like disconnected from GPS, like GPS not connected. So I'm I'm I'll, like I'm screwed. So I look up. And the drone's nowhere, it's not in line of sight whatsoever, it's somewhere else. And I see the drone just drifting away because I'm looking at the camera through like my phone. And the drone's completely drifting away, it's not connected to the GPS, it can't hold its position. So luckily, since the signal is so strong, I never lost the actual like signal between the remote control and the drone. Otherwise, I would have been completely screwed. So I managed to kind of maneuver the drone around, figure out where everything is. I actually ran outside, like I ran up the street because I knew I could fly the drone. Like I look at you, okay, if this is there, that means this is here, that's there. Flew to all those places, returned it home. And managed to land it. It was super, super sketchy, but that's never happened to me. That's never happened to me before with a drone signal it just completely disconnects with like the GPS. So I'm assuming that's a firmware issue because I didn't upgrade the firmware. What's up, bro? What's up? Yeah, I'm assuming it's just a firmware issue upgrade. So right now I'm charging the drone. I'm charging the batteries. I'm charging everything. So hopefully all that's going to be done. I'm going to connect everything. I'm going to make sure everything's fully upgraded, fully calibrated. So. I don't get that horrifically scary, the horrific, yo, Jonah, I can't speak today. It's not working for me. What do you think about that? You sound good so far. What, what, what did I just end off? I said horribly? So what was I saying? I don't know. Wait, hey, can you open the oven and look at the chicken real quick? Look at the chicken real quick. I, you, your humble thing, you think it's burning? No. Okay. It's not burning. Quinn, did you hear what I was saying? I was like horribly something. All right. Oh, I think I remember. So hopefully, after I do all the calibrations, all the firmware upgrades, I don't get this disgusting, uh, horrifying incident that happens to me tonight. Uh-oh. We have Kenny. He's a little bit of tired. Kenny just came home from work, so he's a little fatigued. He's a little drowsy, right? And he's strong. We have Dylan. He took so much pre-workout, but the gym was closed. So he has all this energy he doesn't know what to do with. Which left arm? Why, why do you want to go left? That scares me. I broke his right. He knows not to go his right. I beat him on his right. Ready. 
set, go. <laughs> oh shit, yo, Kenny, he's got some. <gasps> Kenny! He wasn't like literally, I, he let me fucking do that. Here. Well, they're making all the pockets. Someone said, ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Kenny? Ready, set, go. It's fucking cute, kid. Mm. Alright, say ready, set, ready, go. Ready, set, go. Fucking, it's a table. You're fucking. <laughs> 